Refitting a radio controlled Glasgow paddle steamer. This is part 7. Boiler works, fitting the water gauge and the steam test. I went up to Blackgate's engineering the other day to buy a water gauge for this boiler. But as Phil and Jackie were at the Doncaster show, most of the stock had gone with them. And besides, I needed a quarter by 32 threads per inch water gauge. So I drove over to see my friend Chris English at CME Engineering and I bought some from him. And the good thing was that the water gauges were not assembled. So here I am applying some Loctite 542 to the thread that screws into the main body. This is also internally threaded, which takes the main stainless steel shaft with the tapered plug on the end. And here I've just fitted the O-ring, and this is the brass nut that holds the O-ring in place. And in no time at all, I have a finished lower part of the water gauge, all ready to fit to the boiler. The thread in the lower part of the water gauge is for the drain pipe. But there's not much room in the boat, so I'm not going to fit this. Here's the top part of the water gauge, and I now need to put a glass tube between the two. But first of all, I need to get them to line up. And for that, I'm using the normal shim washers. These are just copper washers of different thicknesses, and you combine them to make it so that when the parts are tightened up, they press against the washers. The general rule is you get the part nearly to where it needs to be, and when you tighten the fitting, it's in exactly the right position to line up with the bottom one. This takes a lot longer than I'm showing here because you have to try different combinations to get the pressure on the fitting just right. If you don't put enough shim washers in, the fitting will go past where you need it to be, and if you put too many in, you won't be able to get it in the right position. I've done a lot of this, so I'll make it look very simple and straightforward, and it is really, it's just practice. If the O-rings are in good condition, you don't really need to tighten the nuts with a spanner but I generally will just nip them up with the spanner a very small amount. This is the plug going into the top, and that's the water gauge fitted. Now it's time to fill the gas tank, and you should do this outside, not on the bench like I'm doing it. I've made videos about filling gas tanks, so I'm not going to repeat the process in this video. Do you remember the special anti-vacuum fitting at the top of the boiler? I showed that in the last episode. It can also be quite useful for filling the boiler when it's cold using a syringe. But don't forget to use the plastic syringes. Don't use the ones that you find on street corners and in public parks. They are far too small. It took long enough to fill the boiler using this, so maybe it's a better idea to remove the plug entirely and put a funnel in there. In this clip, I'm fitting the gas pipe to the gas tank. Inside the knurled brass ring, there is an O-ring that seals it. Now it's time to see if the gas jet is the right size and have a look at the flame on the gas burner head. And to be honest, I'm not too thrilled with this. This is a number 8 gas jet, and I would have expected a little bit more force and power. Possibly it's blocked up. Now I want to give you a really good tip at this point. I silver soldered the union onto the end of the pipe, and I didn't put the pipe in the acid bath, so there could be some pieces of scale and even flux residue blocking the gas jet. But I will carry on regardless and see whether this raises steam. And after a while, we have some steam, about £20 per square inch. And I've connected a Cheddar Models engine to it that I have. This is a Cheddar Models Puffin, and it's bigger than the pintail that's in the paddle steamer. The problem is, though, I can't seem to get the needle to go past £20 per square inch. It's running the engine OK, though, which is quite good, I suppose, because if it runs this at this speed, it will run the pintail even better, because it really is much smaller than this engine. Once again, though, as the engine is running, all that's registering on the pressure gauge is £20 per square inch. So I'm going to turn it off and terminate this part of the steam test. In the steam test are one or two health and safety warnings. This is the first one. Once you finish using the gas tank, empty it outside. Make sure you turn it upside down so all the liquid comes out. The next day in the workshop, I thought I would do a bit of experimentation. This is a number 10 gas jet, which to be honest is a bit big for a burner of this size. But it works and it's burning quite well in free air. The gas burns quite differently though inside the flue tube. As the burner is in a flue tube and the chimney is the end of the flue tube effectively, I'm lighting it there. And as you can hear, it's making a very healthy roaring sound, but unfortunately it's making a very bad smell. The smell coming out of the chimney is really grim. And in a matter of a couple of minutes, this happens. My carbon monoxide alarm starts to go off so it's time to turn off the gas and leave the workshop until it clears. Health and safety warning, do not run these kind of gas plants indoors. I'm trying to show the most effective way to kill myself so that you don't have to. 
Oh dear, it would appear to be going dark. After the deadly carbon monoxide dissipated, I removed the number 10 jet because that's far too big, and this time I fitted a known good number 5 jet. And this was far better, much more heat, no smell, and no carbon monoxide alarm going off. So now I can fit the boiler into the boat and give the boat a steam test in the garden. And as soon as we get some good weather, that's what I'll be doing. And that's it for this one. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.